Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the Midweek Supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the podcast. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting and our Midweek supplemental episode, as we are calling it, is the episode where we get to dive deep into a handful of knife stories and knife news and, you know, really get the news and, and kind of dive deep on some of the, the topics in the news. And, Bob, something that uh, just came out a couple of days ago, maybe even the uh, end of last week, uh, SOG. And it seems like we are constantly talking about SOG We, we have been talking about SOG uh, most recently uh, due to their... Uh, rehashing their whole line of folding knives and kind of mm -hmm. restyling and updating. And the the updates that I've seen so far are really exciting and definitely have me taking a another look at SOG folders. Always been a big fan of their of their old uh classic style fixed blades, but but uh you know uh this uh the gentleman who started it, his name is Spencer Fraser, and he started the company SOG by trying to recreate the famous Mac V SOG Bowie. Um, and, and this was a, a knife made for special operations who were going in and doing reconnaissance in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, and, and such. Uh, and the knife that they had was uh, sort of legendary. And I remember seeing uh, an interview on YouTube with Nut and Fancy interviewing Spencer Fraser, and he talked about the whole story of of getting this, uh, having this uh, Mac V Sog Bowie reproduced in Ch in Japan, and just the, kind of the tribulations he went through to have this knife reproduced, but how having it done uh, was what launched the entire company. And uh, thirty thirty some odd years later, he's uh, stepping down. He'll take an advisory role, uh, but uh, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's happening kind of right as the whole series of knives that they have are kind of being retooled. So maybe that was uh -huh. his swan song you know upon right. leaving but i gotta say i'm so i'm so glad spencer fraser brought this mac v sog sort of popularized this this blade and this blade shape but it out of the three or four sogs i have it's definitely my favorite but it it does remind me of the one that's closest to my heart and uh it's this folding uh lockback sog lockback i think it's called a wildcat uh, but it came out, I bought this in a, in a knife shop in Boston in 1991, in the summer of 91. I was there, uh, studying art at the museum school and, uh, there was a, a knife shop, I believe it was on Commonwealth Avenue and, uh, it was downstairs. And, uh, I remember going in there and just being wowed by everything I saw and, uh, seeing this this SOG folding knife, it was the weirdest thing. It looked like the tactical knife that I knew uh, just in a folding version. And at the time, that was brand new. I think maybe Cold Steel had started to make folders at that point. Uh, but I've had this thing ever since, and only in the last year have I put a decent edge on it. It came dull, and it stayed dull because <laughs> I could never sharpen it. And then finally, I, I finally got it screaming sharp, but it's such a sweet little knife. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, I hope uh, Mr. Fraser is is off to uh, greener pastures. Well, it was interesting. Uh, what two weeks ago we had David C. Anderson of the uh, Knife Center. That was uh, episode number six, uh, seventy six, mm -hmm. the knifechunky dot com slash seventy six. And uh, when you ask him about you know twenty twenty things to look forward to, he said SOG knives were kind of the what what did he say the the one to look for? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you know they have the pedigree for sure, and uh, for a while. Um, they stepped astray of what, what is commonly, um, you know, commonly accepted or loved in the knife community, but that didn't stop them from selling a whole lot of knives. You mm -hmm. know, there are a lot of people who don't care about things that knife guys uh, nitpick over. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I feel like they, you know, for a little while there, they had a few things that people love to nitpick over, but you know, SOG is SOG. They're not going anywhere. All right, more of the Knife Junkie podcast coming up in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you that our podcast this week is brought to you by G Suite. It is the solution for anyone running a business, whether it's a side hustle, part-time uh, effort, 
or full-time like a knife maker. Uh, G Suite has a uh, comprehensive set of tools all backed and powered by the power of Google. And not only can you get a professional email for your business, but lots of other tools and features within G Suite. So take your business to the next level. Start running your business like a business, look like a business, get your professional business email address and take advantage of all the tools within G Suite. And you can do that for free for 14 days by just going to the knifejunkie.com slash G Suite, the knifejunkie.com slash G Suite. When you do that, start your free trial. Email me, Jim at the knifejunkie.com. I've got a special code set aside for you where you can save 20% off your first year of G Suite. So get the ball rolling, start looking professional. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash G Suite. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So SC has come out with a fixed blade version of their very uh, popular Zancudo folding knife. And this one's called the Zancudo, but instead of <laughs> Z-A-N-C-U-D-O, it's X-A-N-C-U-D-O. So sounds the same, looks different, I suppose. Uh, but this fixed blade version looks, uh, I don't know, I, I really like it. I've never been a fan of the, of the, uh, folding Zancudo, but this just something about it looks very appealing. It's a three inch blade. SE, instead of using their, their normal 1095 high carbon steel, Went with S35VN on this, and I'm assuming because it's a small three-inch uh, utility knife, um, more of an EDC than anything that's going to receive any sort of impact. So you don't need that sort of high toughness of 1095. And uh, it's got G10 handle scales, and it comes with two different uh, sets of scales. Uh, one is just a, a regular molded sculpted scale, and then the second one is the same scale except with a large oval cut out in the uh, second half of the handle. And uh, that is so that you can apparently hi uh, hang this thing with its Kydex sheath on a carabiner, you know, hang it off mm. of your bag if you're, if you're hiking with it. Uh, interesting thing, uh, that the whole S35VN, which uh, SE has not used before, as far as I know, um, they're also going to be offering S35VN on the SE3, very, very popular um, small camping knife. So, uh, SE3, I think, again, that's a, that's a knife that frequently often, uh, flexes into EDC and just sort of everyday use for people. It's such a great little knife, great little universally shape that why not just have it be S35VN and not worry about the, the stainless, uh, the stainless quality and all that so much. So you said that was SE knives is how you pronounce S -E, it, but it's, yeah. it's spelled E S E E. Yes, and unfortunately, I can't remember what that stands for. It is an acronym, okay. and I think it might be in Spanish. Um, hmm. uh, but don't quote me on that. All right. Well, if I think about it, we'll try to look it up and put it in the show notes, but don't hold, don't hold me to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got to talk about uh, – seems kind of interesting here. We Knives and Kaiser – all involving Justin Lundquist. Yeah, Justin Lundquist, a uh, hot designer, uh, knife maker, who a few years ago, uh, his design, the Feist, was a front flipper. I believe it was the first front flipper that Kaiser made. And uh, one of the first real popular ones out there, and people went nuts for it. Very cool uh, design, very minimalist design. And then he also came out with um, the Angst, also with uh, with Kaiser, <laughs> so I have angst. <laughs> yes, me too. I have knife angst. So uh, yeah, he he um, he is back with both Kaiser and we. Uh, with Kaiser, he's back with this uh, cool little knife called the Contrail, and uh, that's in their Vanguard series. And Jim, I'm not sure if you know this, but Kaiser their Vanguard series is a high value line of knives. So okay. you get some of the same designs in there higher value lines, just with lesser materials. And by lesser, I mean VG10 steel. Actually, they're moving to 154 CM with this Contrail, and hopefully they do that across across that whole line. I love 154 CM steel. VG10, hmm. it's good, fine, fine steel. Leaves me a little cold. <laughs> but <laughs> right. um, So anyway, this uh, Contrail, I am assuming, is called Contrail because it's kind of like you can fly with it. You can't really. Uh, but it's very people friendly, very sheeple friendly. It's got a two inch 
kind of a happy looking uh, curved, you know, bellied worn cliff blade. I don't know, sheep's foot blade. I don't know what you call this thing, but it's got a, a, a downward uh, slope from the, from the, from the uh, spine of the blade and it's got sort of a curved edge. So it's, it can't mm. be a worn cliff. I guess it's a mm. sheep's foot. But anyway, this little thing is friendly looking. Like I said, it's going to come in a number of colors. It's a liner lock and they're using 154. It looks like a great little secondary or tertiary uh, pocket knife. I would definitely go for it. If I were in, you know, if I could actually, if I would actually carry it, I would. I would get something like hmm. that. What do you mean by that? Well, I just keep finding myself buying these awesome little knives, and I like them because I love the designs, but I just never hmm. carry the little knives. You're a big knife. Yeah, guy. that's right. Because <laughs> I'm all a right. manly man. That's right. Well, we all knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, he's got two others coming out with Wii Knife. And, and frankly, I don't know if he's ever done anything with Wii Knife before, but these two he has coming out look cool. Uh, I'll get I'll get the the first one. He's got a dagger coming out, which I just mm. love. And it's called the OSS right. Dagger, like the Office of Strategic Services, uh, you know, the precursor to the CIA. And it's this beautiful, um, you know, beautiful little dagger, double-edged naturally as it should be. Um, but it's it's based on the lapel daggers of World War II. These little, these little last-ditch dagger, uh, flat dagger knives that uh, spies would have sewn in in the lapels of their jacket, just in case they're getting roughed up, they could pull it out. So anyway, it, it's going to be a, a 2.13 inch, 20 CV chisel ground dagger, and that just sounds so up my alley. I'm going to have to. <laughs> I'm going to have to. Got to. Got to have one. Exactly. Got to have one. Add it to the list. Exactly. But the but the one that's a little more interesting in terms of uh, what I think will get more airplay out there is his Black Void Opus, which I'm sorry, that is <laughs> such a pretentious name. It makes my head spin. But in listening to Justin Lundquist talking about designing this, I, I can see that Justin Lundquist is an artist just by the way he talks. You know, I went to my fair share of art school, six years, if, if that's if that's long enough. And he talks about, um, he was designing the knife. He was playing with the positive and negative space and the voids and, 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 uh, and mm. he has a lot of interesting ideas behind how he came up with this thing aesthetically, but none of that matters. It is a beautiful looking knife <laughs> though. It is, right. it is really a, a, a beautiful, very sleek, very nice looking front flipper. Um, people should just look it up. It, it, the blade itself, has uh it, it's it's sort of stabby worn cliffy it's kind of in the justin lundquist uh it's it, what you might you might imagine him designing from mm -hmm. what i've seen okay. before All right. um, but anyway i just loved that kind of very artsy description of because this is someone who obviously to to whom that means a lot you know right um so anyway focus on positive and negative space like miles right. davis it's the notes i don't play well i i'm you know from just a pure business standpoint i find it interesting that at the same time he's got knives coming out with kaiser and we so i just you know yeah it's like huh, interesting how that works and you know what else is is kind of interesting is that things the uh, products that have a story attached to them whether it's organic milk you know that comes from happy cows or whether it's this knife designed by a, a heady artistic knife designer, like a, a product that has a story behind it is inherently more interesting. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, next, Jim, I wanted to bring up Spartan Blades. Uh, Spartan Blades has been around for, I would say, less than 10 years. Uh, and they really differentiated themselves right out of the gate for their high-end, beautiful, um, unusual fixed blade combat knives and um the spartan line names all of their products after greek mythological figures and weapons and such and uh you know that that really had me right at the start first of all i i've always liked the design of their fixed blade knives and uh i just liked that they were doing unusual things with them in terms of shape and, and such uh but they were always out of reach you know pretty expensive fixed blade knives a lot of people these are the these are prices people want to pay on something that that has a mechanism a lot of the time but i'm very happy to find out that they just launched the silver line their price conscious silver line and uh, i'm not exactly sure what the prices are but price conscious to me means it's less than their you know it's it's clearly much less than their regular line 
but that could still leave you for, with a with a, a fine bill. Anyway, they're coming out with three knives: the Alala, the Alala, which is an EDC style, uh, almost four inch uh, drop point blade, and then the Demisus, which is a five and a half inch. Um, now this one looks the most like a combat knife. It's a knife that could, you know, uh, you could do hard hard use tasks with it, but it also has a an aggressive point to it. And you can definitely you know, use it as a fighting knife. And then they have a big recurve chopper called the Makai. Now, this is three solid uh, um, offerings uh, across a span of uses coming out from Spartan. I think that was smart. And uh, usually they use S35VN and I think 20CV. This time out, they're using 1095 Crovan. 1095 is a great steal for outdoor knives and a great steal for fixed blade knives, especially if you're going to be using them hard and you need that sort of toughness. So I think that was a, a smart move there. And uh, they're going to be powder-coated, which, A, helps with the uh, the fact that the 1095 is a high-carbon steel. And it also looks tactical, so it goes with the whole with the whole uh, mystique right. of the thing. The cool thing about this is they're going to be made in, uh, in New York uh, by K-Bar. And uh, as you know, we mentioned on this show a while back, uh, Spartan Knives and K-Bar came together to form Pineland Cutlery. That's uh, right. That? Yeah, down in North Carolina. Yeah, so, Southern Pines, I think. Yeah. yeah. So this is a um, this is kind of the same thing, same companies, same partnership. It's under a different uh, under a different shingle, but it's uh, kind of Ooh. kicking that K Bar and Spartan relationship into high gear. So that's oh, interesting. That's great to see. I love K Bar yeah. knives, and they make great stuff. Well, I like my K Bar knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wrapping up uh, Knife Life News, want to talk about uh, one of the names that uh, we always hear a lot about, Spiderco. Yes, yes. Well, the, so Spiderco just uh, came out with their first product reveal of the year. They've been, uh, this is their second year uh, doing it this way. Instead of, instead of showing everyone what they plan on coming out with at the beginning of the year, they are coming out with several different uh, product reveals in which they release, I don't, you know, uh, whatever amount of knives are ready to go. And there are some pretty cool additions uh, this time. There is the Bombshell, uh, which is a flash batch of Michael Birch designed, uh, the custom knife of that same name. It's a knife I've been seeing um, on Instagram for a long time. It's a beautiful thing. And it's a great knife to to have Spyderco make. It looks like it, the, the aesthetic fits perfectly into Spyderco's line. It's going to have a less than uh, three inch blade, so it's pretty small, but it's a it's going to be twenty CV steel, and it's going to be a big, fat, fat little knife. And I thought that was a cool, uh, just right off the bat, I thought that was a great custom knife to see uh, get the Spider Co treatment. But one thing that's really interesting to me this year is Jim, they're they're um, they're premiering two new steels, uh, CPM SPY twenty seven or Spy twenty seven. Oh, okay. uh, so they teamed up with Crucible Industries to create that, and uh, that will appear on exclusively Spyderco knives, and it will be featured on some of their USA-made models. And I'm not sure what the qualities of this steel are supposed to be. I'm not sure what they were going mm. for when they were making CPM Spy 27, but what a cool name that is. And then right. uh, their second one uh, that they came out with, and it seems like it's about time with all the S35 VN knives we've had floating around the last few years. They're debuting S45VN. Oh. On some of their... That's 10 better. <laughs> it is 10 better. I mean, that's substantial. <laughs> uh, 10 is something there. And so this is going to be... Um, on. They're starting it on the Para 3 and the Paramilitary 2. And uh, so uh, Laren Thomas of Knife Steel Nerds has, has weighed in on this steel. And he says that S45VN's formulation improves edge retention and corrosive uh, corrosion resistance over S35VN while sacrificing a little bit of toughness. And uh, as you know, the these uh, special steels, when Spyderco releases their models in special steels, they always have a certain color handle material to correspond with the steel. So you can tell immediately from the handle material what steel uh, the blade is. And for this, mm. uh, for S45VN, it's going to be forest green. Forest oh. Green, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Well, that sounds kind of nice. So, yeah. And then they have a number of other uh, great-looking things coming out. The Nightstick. It's a Gail Bradley dagger 
Single edge. Wah, wah. Oh, God. If you're <laughs> going to do a dagger, do a dagger. Uh, and then uh, the chaparral. They have a cool chaparral coming out uh, that's kind of a, an artsy uh, sun and moon kind of thing. You know, they, they usually have uh, a knife every year that ha- gets an artistic sort of treatment. And then the Indella is coming out. The Indella, the, the totally unnecessary knife between the Delica and the Endura is coming out with the Emerson opener. So there you go. And there you go. Well, you mentioned Laren Thomas of uh, Knife Steel Nerds. He was uh, way back on episode 13 wow. of the Knife Junkie podcast, the knifejunkie.com slash 13, the knifejunkie.com slash 13. And, uh, you know, as you were talking about these these steels and now these new ones, I mean, I, you know, I've heard you rattle off these numbers and letters and abbreviations, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, there's three or four or five or six, but there's more than that. I mean, it just seems like it goes on. I mean, how yeah. many steels are there? Lots. And, you know, the funny <laughs> yeah. thing is, is um, the, the hot steel lately has been M390 or mm-hmm. 20CV or 204P, and those are all steels, I believe they're all made by different companies. I know, I know there are two different companies involved in those three steels for sure. And, uh, but they all have, you no, know, it is three different companies, but they, they all have, it's like the same formulation just from different companies. So they can brand it as their own and put their own letter alphabet combination on it. Exactly. And then, <laughs> and then and when we were uh, talking about this stuff with uh, super, super steel, Steve, you know, he was talking about heat treat and how much heat treat matters. You know, you can have uh, a soft M390 blade, and then what's the point? You know, you're paying a premium for the steel type, but if it's not heat treated uh, in in a way that optimizes that steel type, you know, it's kind of a waste. That's one way of looking at it, and a very interesting and compelling way of looking at it. Well, you mentioned Super Steel Steve uh, off of YouTube. Uh, we uh, had a chance to uh, interview him, and you'll hear that interview coming up this Sunday on uh, the Knife Junkie uh, podcast. So that'll be coming up on the weekend interview show. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, having to get uh, more educated about steels. And uh, I don't know that I can do it. I just I was never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was just never a thing of mine. You know, you so. know, Jim, uh, I, I, I kind of feel um, like I just don't want to. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. care to dip into the chemistry and find out that deeply about steel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think, I think for me personally, my desire to, to learn that stuff would only come out of a, out of a practical need. Like if I start forging knives in my later life, you know, that, that kind of information sure. will probably become pertinent and interesting to me. But right now it's just right. as abstract as high school chemistry. And and to a great extent, I, I'm choosing knives by the designs and by the perceived utility. And the difference between steels, uh, though kind of important as a collector, as a user, it's just not coming much into play. Yeah, well, I yeah, I, we will agree on that. It's it's not at all into play for me. I'm a, I'm the aesthetic guy, the looks guy. So uh, so yeah, uh, Laren back on episode thirteen, Super Steel Steve coming up uh, this weekend, and uh, maybe we'll work to uh, get Laren back on the show to talk more steel uh, as we seem to be having more steels coming out and that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, anyway, and now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast want to remind you that uh, coming up are some knife shows, uh, maybe uh, still uh, steel, <laughs> still a chance for you to uh, uh, take part in some of these coming up uh, end of the month down in Florida. It's going to be the Gator Cutlery Show. That's uh, Friday, January 31st through Saturday, uh, Sunday, February 2nd. Uh, you get more information if you go to GatorCutlery.com, GatorCutlery.com. Then uh, at the Canary Ballroom, Nashville, Tennessee, the Tactical Knife Invitational, uh, February 15th. The uh, Las Vegas Custom Knife Maker Show with the Las Vegas Antique Arms Show, February 28th through March 1st. That's at the Westgate Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. And then uh, in uh, Miami County Fairgrounds in Troy, Ohio, March 6 and 7, it's the Spirit of the Blade Custom Knife Show. Just a few of the knife shows uh, going to highlight here uh, if we can remember to do it every uh, week here on the Supplemental. And again, this uh, information uh, we are getting from our friends over at uh, knifemagazine.com. Great list of uh, knife shows and knife club meetings. If you don't have a subscription, we encourage you to go and do that now. 
Visit The Knife Junkie at theknifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. Bob, you mentioned uh, Super Steel Steve that's coming up, but uh, also the next Thursday Night Knives show, Thursday, January 23rd, uh, a repeat co-host for you. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Terrell Thomas, otherwise known as Zell, Zellrig42 on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, he will be guest hosting. What a great guy and, and, uh, very, um, knowledgeable, uh, mm-hmm. as he and his brother have, have been, uh, uh I'm not going to say on a journey. He and his brother have been <laughs> making knives and engaging in this, uh, complicated effort of designing and, uh, having knives produced by overseas companies and they're just killing it. And, uh, I have two of their knives. I have the malware produced by Best Tech and I have, the Roxy 4 produced by Wee Knives and both knives design wise I love. Both knives have a very interesting futuristic look that look like they shouldn't be comfortable and are comfortable and just have incredibly functional and, and useful blades. Anyway, it's, it's great to have him on the show. We had him on once before and then we also had him on the uh, interview show and, uh, with his brother Seth, uh, his designing partner for Todd Knife and Tool. And it's just great to have him on this show because he brings a perspective uh, that uh, we, we would otherwise be lacking because he's been through the mill. Uh, <laughs> pun, uh-huh. pun now intended. Intended. <laughs> <laughs> he's been through the mill of, uh, you know, the design process, but also the production process. And he's a direct link to that world that we love because, you know, He's involved in it. You know, I, I love he's they are also making great use of as much modern technology as they can get their hands on. Yes, they design their knives in AutoCAD or I can't remember what uh, program, but, you know, they send the files to the other side of the planet. Uh, and on the other side of the planet, they stick that file in a machine. It starts producing these incredible knives. They use technology that way, but they also uh, have their own 3D printers uh, for prototyping. And, you know, I think at this point, that's, uh, kind of a necessary purchase. I, I would think yeah. maybe not necessary, but it would, what a great way to feel something and to actually get a, get a sense of how the mechanics work, right. uh, then, then building a, 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 a very true to life mock-up in one of those machines. Absolutely. Well, again, uh, Bob mentioned, uh, uh, Terrell, uh, uh, past guest on Thursday Night Knives, but also Terrell and Seth on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you want to get any of the uh, podcast episodes, go to thenifejunkie.com slash listen. You'll be able to uh, find all those there and listen right there on the website. And if we could ask you a favor, please leave a rating, leave a review on the podcast. It really uh, helps us get some feedback about what we about what uh, you think we're doing right or wrong. Uh, what guest you like, what guest you'd like to hear, just, you know, give us a review, give us a rating. It would mean the world to us to, to get your feedback on that. And if I could ask one more favor, if you want to help support the show, if you're shopping on Amazon or shopping on eBay, let me give you a link to use. Uh, you won't pay any more if you buy some stuff, but we'll get a very, very small commission, but it will uh, help uh, keep the lights on here. Uh, so if you go to thenifejunkie.com slash shop Amazon, or thenifejunkie.com slash shop eBay and uh, just make your purchases as normal and we'll get a very small commission. And like I said, it'll help the show out. Bob, as we wrap up, uh, final thoughts from the Knife Junkie, uh, this uh, midweek supplemental. Uh, I've got a number of uh, people on hold. I'm trying to figure out dates to interview, but stay tuned to the Sunday show. As you alluded to before, Jim, there are just endless People in this industry who, who are interesting and I just need to get them to talk to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, I have a number of people who want to talk to me and, uh, we're nailing down those dates. And, uh, so we got a lot of great shows coming up. Yeah. Well, as you said, we got a lot of great interviews already in the can, a lot of great interviews already booked, but, uh, still need more. If you, uh, want to be interviewed or if you know somebody that should be interviewed, uh, call the listener line and let us know 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. Bob, your final word. Jim, it's don't take dull for an answer. Ooh, good final answer or final word. <laughs>
For The Knife Junkie, Bob DeMarco, I'm Jim Person. Thanks for listening to The Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to The Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.